Hello friends, today we are about to learn Kirchhoff's voltage law. Kirchhoff's voltage law is based on the law of conservation of energy. According to Kirchhoff's voltage law, the sum of all voltages around the loop is zero. Let us take a simple circuit in order to demonstrate how to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law. Before that, we will find the value of current flowing through the circuit with the help of Ohm's law. By Ohm's law, we know that V is equal to IR. Therefore, the current I is actually found out by dividing 9, that is the voltage, with the resistance in series which is nothing but 18 kilo ohms. On actually dividing it, we will find that the current is just 0.5 milliamperes. Now let us uh, learn how to apply KVL. The first step towards applying KVL is assuming the direction of the current. Here the direction of the current is assumed to be clockwise. You can assume the direction as anti-clockwise as well. The second step is to add a positive and negative sign to the end of the resistances. The positive sign is drawn from that side of the resistance from which the current enters the resistance. Here you can see that the current is entering the resistance from this side. Hence, this is the side at which a positive sign is drawn. Similarly, for resistance R2, the current is entering from this side. Hence, the positive sign is over here. For R3, the positive sign is over here. Now we have to travel along the direction of the current. While traveling from positive sign to negative sign, there is a fall in potential. Whereas, while traveling from negative sign to positive sign, there is a gain in potential. Let us see this practically. In this circuit, I am first moving from the negative terminal of the battery towards the positive terminal of the battery. Since I am travelling from negative to positive, there is a gain in potential. Hence, there is a plus 9 in the equation. Now, as I have crossed the battery, I will now try to cross the resistance. While crossing the resistance, I have to travel from the positive sign to the negative sign. Hence, there is a fall in potential. Hence, there is a negative sign over here in the equation. Now, the value of the potential drop over here is given by the current passing through the resistance R1 multiplied by the resistance R1. That is simply Ohm's law. So, minus R1 into I, the current. Now, let us travel to R2. Since we are travelling from the positive sign towards the negative sign, there is again a fall in potential, hence a negative sign over here in the equation. Now, since there is a negative sign in the equation, uh, after multiplying, uh, sorry, I am really sorry. Now, there is a negative sign because of the fall in potential and the fall in potential is equal to the resistance value multiplied by the current passing through R2. Similarly, for R3, there is a fall in potential since we are traveling from positive to negative terminal of the resistance. So, and the sum of all this potential according to Kirchhoff's voltage law should be equal to zero. On substituting the values of resistances, we get the following equation. On solving for the value of current, we get current I is equal to 0.5 milliampere, which is same as that obtained by Ohm's law. Now let us apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to a system having two meshes. Here the step one remains same, that is we have to assume the direction of the current. The direction of the current has been assumed to be clockwise for both the loops I1, the current for loop 1 and I2 is the current for loop 2 and both are in clockwise direction. You can assume anti-clockwise direction as well. Step 2 remains same for uh, two loops as well. We have to assign positive and negative signs to the end of the resistances. For loop 1, I1 is entering this side of the resistance, hence a positive sign 
and for loop 1 i1 is entering resistance r2 from this side hence there is a positive sign over here for loop 2 the case is opposite for loop 2 the current is entering from this side hence the value of sign over here is positive downwards and negative upwards now how to make this equation from the above uh, diagram so for loop 1 we will first consider this uh, loop 1 so for loop 1 we will start traveling from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal of the battery from negative to positive terminal of the battery there is a gain in potential hence there is a positive sign over here in the equation 28 plus 28 now you have to move from the positive end of the resistance to the negative end of the resistance that is a fall in, uh, fall in potential therefore you will have to multiply this 4 with current I1 so 28 fall in resistance 4 multiplied by I1 now you have to travel uh, through the resistance R2 so when you travel through the resistance R2 the actual value of current flowing through R2 is R2 is nothing but I1 minus I2 so the fall in potential at R2 is given by minus 2 multiplied by I1 minus I2 and according to KVL the sum of all these potentials around the loop should be 0 now let us apply KVL to the second loop for second loop we are traveling from the positive end of the battery to negative end that is the fall in potential therefore minus 7 volts when we travel from uh, the resistance R2 we actually are traveling from the positive to negative hence a negative sign in the equation over here but the fall in potential will now be 2 times I2 minus I1 since we are actually considering loop 2 over here now we have to travel through the resistance R3 since we are traveling from positive terminal to the negative terminal there is a negative sign in the equation over here and its uh, fall in potential is given by R3 multiplied by the current I2 and the sum of all this is 0 so here you have two unknowns I1 and I2 and to find these two unknowns you need two equations so the these two equations are obtained from the loop 1 and loop 2 by simplifying these two equations you can find the value of I1 and I2 the super mesh problem till now we have seen circuits which didn't have a current source between two meshes here we have a current source of 5 ampere between mesh 1 and mesh 2 because of this we cannot apply KVL uh, directly as we have done previously in this case the first step remains same that is assume the direction of the currents here the direction has been assumed to be clockwise the second step too is same that is we have to add signs positive and negative however now we need to solve this problem we simply cannot use loop 1 to apply KVL because there is a current source over here similarly we cannot use loop 2 because of this current source so we first go to loop 3 because this loop has no current source the uh, equation derived over here is nothing but is actually uh, derived using the same method as previously so it is minus 3 for traveling from this positive potential to negative potential multiplied by I3 minus 4 uh, into I3 minus I2 and minus 2 into I3 minus I1 and the sum is equal to 0 this is the first equation which we have got the second equation will be actually from this current source itself we know that the current overall is flowing in the upward direction that is I2 which is flowing in this direction is greater than I1 which is flowing in this direction by 5 amperes hence we write the equation I2 minus I1 is equals to 5 I2 minus I1 is equals to 5 now we have to consider the super mesh the super mesh is actually this mesh which we have to consider
Now in order to apply KVL at the super mesh, we again use the steps which we had done previously. That is, we travel from positive to negative, there is a fall in potential, so a minus 1 into I1. We travel from positive to negative, so minus 2 into I1 minus I3 and similarly minus 4 into I2 minus I3 for this resistance and then traveling from positive end of the potential to negative of the end of the potential, there is a fall in resistance of minus 10 and equal to 0. Now we have three unknowns I1, I2 and I3 and we have three equations having I1, I2 and I3. Hence we can get the value of I1, I2 and I3 by solving for these three equations. I hope by seeing the above examples it is clear to you how to solve KVL equations. Hope you would like my video and 